Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into something super relevant for all of you students out there, and that is the best work from home jobs. They can help you earn money while balancing your studies. Now I've got some unique options that you've probably never heard about before, so stick around until the end, and let's go ahead and jump in right now with number one on the list, which is probably one you have heard about, but it's actually really good, and that's online tutoring. Now before you leave, I wanna tell you a story. When I was in college, I stumbled into online tutoring almost by accident, and I started by helping my classmates prepare for a tough pharmacy school entrance exam called the PCAT. So basically, I studied really hard for the PCAT. I found the best study resources, and then I ended up scoring really well on it, and the word spread quickly. And before I knew it, I was making over $100 an hour tutoring other people on how they can do well on the test as well. Now, this experience not only helped me financially, but it also deepened my understanding of the material. And I was literally a college student making up to $180 an hour doing this. But it's not just standardized tests. There's lots of other options for things that you can tutor people on. So basically, what you're doing is helping other students understand subjects that you excel in. And this could be anything from math to science to language skills or even test prep. And there's many reasons why this is appealing. For instance, there's flexible hours that work around your class schedule. You also get to reinforce your own knowledge. And most importantly, you get to develop your communication and teaching skills. English, mother do you speak it? Now, the way that you'd get started for this is you'd sign up to a platform such as VIP Kid, Chegg, or TutorMe. And then you'd create a compelling profile highlighting your strengths. And then you just start with a few hours a week of tutoring and you scale up as you get comfortable. Now, another thing you can do is actually just tutor people in real life and in person. And the way you could get started by this is joining different school groups and then telling people that you're a tutor for these different subjects. You could also post on your local university forum. You could post on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist as well. Now, some of the skills that you're gonna need here are of course, a strong knowledge in your subject area. You're gonna have to have patience and good communication skills and basic technical skills if you're doing online tutoring. Now, here's how much you can make according to Glassdoor on on average as a tutor. But realistically speaking, when you first start, you're likely gonna be working part-time and you're not gonna be making anywhere near that much. <laughs> Here's some examples of other people that have had success tutoring as well. You can pause the video and check them out if you'd like. Now, some potential challenges here would be building a consistent student base, right? So basically building a book of students who are regularly booking your tutoring sessions. Also dealing with different learning styles can be challenging. And some growth opportunities here would be developing your own course materials and then specializing in either test preparation or something much more specific for higher rates. And overall, I think this is a phenomenal opportunity. I made a ton of money doing this when I was in college. I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10 opportunity score. And by the way, guys, if you're loving these money making tips so far, go ahead and cheers that like button it really helps out the channel. And I'll know that you want more content like this. Next on the list is going to be social media management. And this one's close to my heart because it's essentially what I do now with my YouTube channel, just on a larger scale. And when I was starting out, I created several YouTube channels on different topics. And while those early attempts didn't take off, they did teach me invaluable lessons about content creation and audience engagement. And basically what you're gonna be doing here is managing social media accounts for businesses, creating and scheduling posts, and engaging with followers. And then on top of that, especially if you get a little more advanced, you're likely gonna be analyzing the performance of the content and making improvements on it. And the reason why this is appealing is it utilizes skills you likely already have. If you're watching this and you're on the younger side and you watch a lot of content, you likely already know what makes good or bad content. And so this is one of those jobs that you pretty much automatically have an advantage with. And a lot of the time they actually prefer to hire younger people for these roles. Plus, this is one of those jobs that can be done in short bursts of time between classes. Now, one thing that's really cool about this is it does keep you up to date with social media trends. And if you wanna start your own business, later on that is built off of content, this is going to be a great gateway for you to do that. So the way you'd get started here is you would familiarize yourself with social media management tools. Then you'd create a portfolio by managing your own social media effectively. And then you'd look for opportunities on job boards or by directly approaching small businesses. So the skills you need here are an understanding of the different social media platforms. You need some creativity for content creation and you need some basic analytics skills. The potential earnings here are likely gonna be between 15 and $50 per hour. And you could be potentially earning 500 to $2,000 per month part-time. Some potential challenges in this job would be keeping up with constantly changing algorithms and trends, also balancing multiple client needs. And a tip for this is to make sure to use scheduling tools to manage multiple accounts efficiently. And some growth opportunities would be to expand into paid social media advertising and offer comprehensive digital marketing services. So you could go from being a social media manager to owning your own social media or starting a social media agency as well. So overall, I think this one is phenomenal. Lots of opportunity here. 
here, this is a type of digital marketing and digital marketing is without a doubt the most effective type of marketing in the modern day. So I'm gonna give this one an opportunity score of 10 out of 10. And by the way, if you wanna take your digital marketing skills to the next level, check out the comprehensive digital marketing course and free training below. It covers everything from social media strategy to SEO to paid ads, and it helps you decide which one is right for you and if digital marketing in general is gonna be a good choice for you as well. And it's completely free, so check it out down in the description and the pinned comment below. Next is going to be virtual event planning. So event planners organize and manage online events, webinars, and virtual conferences for businesses and organizations. And it's appealing to a lot of people because it combines creativity with technical skills. Plus there's growing demand in the post-pandemic world, and it can be done entirely remotely. So the way you'd get started is you would familiarize yourself with the virtual event platforms such as Zoom, Hopin, etc. You'd create a portfolio by organizing free events for local groups, and then you'd network with businesses and event organizers on places like LinkedIn. Now, some skills that you would need for this are strong organizational skills, familiarity with various online platforms, and problem-solving abilities for technical issues. Here's the average earnings for event planners according to Glassdoor. And I recently came across a Reddit post where someone mentioned their sister-in-law plans medical conferences for corporations. And that just shows when it comes to virtual event planning, it's really good if you specialize in a particular type of virtual event planning. And this is definitely something that you can start as a student, especially if you find the right niche. Now, some potential challenges here are keeping up with rapidly evolving technology and managing multiple stakeholders and time zones. And a tip with this would be to create detailed run of show documents to keep events on track. Now, some growth opportunities here would be to specialize in niche markets, such as virtual trade shows, online gaming tournaments, etc. And you could also develop your own virtual event platforms or communities. So overall, I do like this one. I'm going to go ahead and give it an eight out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be content writing. So during my early YouTube days, I experimented with content writing for different niches. And it was fascinating because each article I wrote taught me something new. And this experience actually helped me later when I was creating scripts for my YouTube videos, because I kind of knew which types of niches I liked and which ones I didn't like. And I also knew things that were important, like which niches are in demand and which niches you can get the most views from. Now in this job, you'd basically be creating articles, blog posts, social media content, etc., for businesses or websites. And the reason why it's appealing is because it improves your writing skills, you have flexible deadlines, and you have an opportunity to learn about various different types of topics. So the way that you'd get started here is you'd create a portfolio of writing samples, you'd sign up to platforms like Upwork, Fiverr, or Text Broker, and you start with smaller, easier projects and work your way up. And the biggest thing here is to keep on building your portfolio and making it better and better. Now, some skills that you would need here are good writing and grammar skills, research abilities, and the ability to follow style guidelines. And when it comes to the potential earnings, you can make really good money. Here's the average according to Glassdoor. Now, some potential challenges with this would be meeting tight deadlines. Sometimes people might need a blog post put out very quickly. And sometimes you can also have to deal with writer's block. And a tip for this is to create a content calendar to manage your workload effectively and embrace AI because it can help you make your content faster and better. And some growth opportunities here are for you to specialize in a particular type of writing and a specific niche. So for instance, you could do technical writing for dentists, or you could do blog posts for real estate agents. And it's very important that you specialize in this type of niche because that's the only way that you're gonna be able to give really high quality information for the people who read that type of content. And of course, later on down the line, you could start your own content marketing agency. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one an opportunity score of 7.5 out of 10. Now, by the way, have you ever tried writing any type of content? Drop a comment below and let me know your experience or if you're thinking about giving it a shot. I love hearing back from you guys. Next is going to be virtual assistant. I remember when I first learned about working remotely, I met a guy in a cafe making $20,000 a month, only having to work about five to 10 hours a week remotely. And he had this cool satellite internet setup that gave him Wi-Fi anywhere. And it was eye-opening for me about the power of in-demand skills and remote work. And one thing that's really funny about this situation is he actually hired virtual assistants to help him with his job. And as a virtual assistant, you'd basically be providing remote administrative support to businesses or entrepreneurs. And the reason it's appealing is because you get to do a variety of different tasks. You get to develop a wider range of practical skills, and this can lead to valuable business connections and valuable skills that you've learned. So the way you'd get started here is to identify your strengths, such as organization, communication, being tech savvy, et cetera. And then you'd create profiles on platforms like Zirtual or Time, et cetera. And you'd probably want to pick some type of niche here. So for instance, you could be a virtual assistant for real estate agents or a virtual assistant for agency owners. And then you'd want to be networking on LinkedIn or in online business communities. Now, some of the skills that you're going to need for this are always good communication skills 
skills, good time management and organization, and proficiency with common softwares such as Microsoft Office, Google Workspace, etc. And the potential earnings here are going to be about $15 to $30 per hour. And realistically, you're probably going to be earning somewhere between $500 and $2,000 per month, depending on the amount of hours that you work. And in many cases, you can work flexible schedules. Now, some potential challenges here would be managing multiple clients and tasks. In some cases, virtual assistants actually work with multiple different clients and also dealing with unclear instructions. And a tip on this is to develop a system for tracking tasks and deadlines. Now, some growth opportunities here are for you to specialize in areas like social media management or bookkeeping for higher pay. And of course, once you discover a type of industry or job that you like, you can move from being a virtual assistant into more of a specialist. But overall, this is a really good place to start. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. And by the way, if you're finding this video helpful, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and share it with a friend who's looking to make some extra cash as well. Next is going to be website testing. And this reminds me of my early days of making money online. Because when I was around 12, I used to upload content onto a website called eBombs World. And they had a point system where you could exchange points for prizes. And it wasn't exactly website testing, but it taught me about user engagement and how websites work. And that's actually one of the first times that I actually made real money online. And as a website tester, you can evaluate websites or apps for usability and provide feedback to developers. And the reason why this is appealing is because short tasks can fit into small pockets of free time. And so if you have 20 or 30 minutes free, this would be a great thing for you to do because that's probably about as long as it would take you to evaluate a website. It typically doesn't have to be done at a certain time period, and there's no special skills required beyond basic computer literacy. Also, as a side note, this is a really good one to get into to build a portfolio if you want to get into website design or UX UI design. Now, one way that you can get started with this is to sign up on platforms like user testing or testing time. You can also complete practice tests to improve your feedback skills, and you can be consistent and provide thorough, honest feedback. Now, some skills needed here are the ability to clearly express your thoughts, basic knowledge of web browsing, and attention to detail. And the potential earnings are $10 to $60 per test, which means you could potentially be earning $100 to $500 per month. Now, some potential challenges here would be the limited number of tests available. The tests that you have available are likely going to depend on where you live and other factors that are kind of outside of your control, and also the need to respond quickly to test invitations. And a tip here is to sign up to multiple different testing platforms to increase your opportunities. Now, some growth opportunities here are the ability to transition into becoming a professional UX UI designer and also offering more comprehensive usability audits for businesses. And overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of 6.5 out of 10. And by the way, if you're enjoying this content and want more tips on making money online, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. You won't want to miss out on some of our upcoming videos because we've got some awesome stuff planned. Next is going to be an AI prompt engineer. So this one is cutting edge. I recently met a computer science student at a tech conference who's making a killing as an AI prompt engineer. He's essentially teaching AI models how to understand and respond to human queries more effectively. And AI prompt engineers develop and refine prompts for AI language models to improve their performance and accuracy. And the reason why this is appealing is because it's a cutting edge field with high demand. It also combines creativity with technical knowledge, and there's potential for very high earnings. And the way you'd get started with this is learn more about natural language processing and AI models. There's lots of information out there that's free or very affordable on websites like YouTube, Khan Academy, or Coursera. And then you'd experiment with platforms like GPT-3 or Claude, and you'd look for opportunities on AI-focused job boards or directly with AI companies. Now, the skills needed for this are an understanding of AI and machine learning concepts, creativity in formulating diverse prompts, and analytical skills to evaluate AI responses. And the potential earnings here are astronomically high. You can actually make $50 to $200 per hour, and you could potentially be earning $1,000 to $5,000 per month, even just working part time. Now, some potential challenges are this is a rapidly evolving field requiring constant learning. There is high competition as the field gains popularity. And a tip for this, by the way, is to always stay updated with the latest AI research and developments. And some growth opportunities are going to be you can transition into AI research or development roles, and you can start a consulting business for AI implementation. So yeah, this one's a great opportunity. I am so bullish on AI at this point. I used to be an AI hater, and I've completely changed my mind on it. And so yeah, this one's a great opportunity. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 opportunity score. And by the way, if you want to know what the highest paying jobs are, check out this video right here where I talk about the 21 highest paying work from home jobs that are almost always hiring.